Hello everybody, welcome to the channel. Um, what we're doing today, this is actually going to be one of the first uh, instructional type videos I'm going to put on. Behind me, I've got a piece of equipment for my business. It's, uh, it's an industrial steam cleaner, pressure washer, you know, for doing driveways, brick restoration, that kind of thing. There's actually another channel I can put a link to that. Um, I keep having to leave it, uh, either on its own or on the back of the van. And I'm always worried that somebody's going to try and steal it, it's actually worth quite a bit of money. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to weld this to the draw bar, um, just at one end with one link. That way obviously I can loop it round something, maybe the, the rear of the van or even to a, you know, a fence post, something. Uh, I can even block it round the hitch to stop the hitch working as well as the hitch lock. I just want something else just to, just to make sure nobody can steal it. Um, it's not a great trailer. I'll go through that in a minute when I come back down, when I come down onto the ground. Um, so what I'm not doing, I'm not, I'm not putting this chain on to stop it from breaking away from the vehicle or anything. It's purely for security. So what I'll do now, I'll bring it down to the uh, to the ground level so we can see the hitch, and I'll show what we need to go through to to get welded to it. Okay, we've moved down to the bottom now. Um, this is what we're going to be doing. We've got our length of chain. Uh, I'm just looking around the hitch. I don't want to weld it anywhere that's going to, you know, obviously it's not going to come off very easily, so I don't want it in the way of anything. So I'm actually thinking about the like that. Um, so before we can start welding, what we've got to do is prepare this surface. To do that, we're going to need an angle grinder. One angle grinder. Now you can see we're not using a grinding disc or a cutting disc or anything like that. This is a, uh, it's a flat disc or a limishing disc. It's basically this one's, let's take a look, this one is, this one's 80 grit. So 80 grit sandpaper and little flaps. That'll take the paint off really easily. Now, the purpose for taking the paint off is because obviously when you're welding, the object's going to be the earth, the wire coming through the middle of the MIG, that's going to be the feed. So if there's any paint there, it's going to insulate. Uh, it'll also contaminate the weld even if you manage to get through it. So you want to get rid of as much of the paint as you can. The other thing I'm going to suggest that, that you do, and this is something I've learned through experience, clean a big area off, don't be stingy. It's always better to clean it off with a grinder than it is to try and clean it off when uh, the heat's transferred, burnt it and bubbled it. It's a pain in the arse, just, just clean it back. Um, always wear goggles, and you should always wear ear defenders as well. I've forgotten mine, so I can't do it, but I'm only going to be doing it for a few seconds, I'm not too worried. But if I had forgotten my glasses, I wouldn't do that. Um, I have seen one of these things come out, I've seen one explode, it's not pretty. It only takes, you know, what are these, a pound each or something, don't worry about it, just get a pair and wear them. So let's get started. I'm just going to clean this area off just here. I'll come in for a close up when I've finished it. And uh, then we'll get the welder out. So I've got the handle on the grinder. I'm going to have to get in the way of it here. So we're going to be cleaning yeah, this sort of broad area. We don't need to mark it. So uh, let's go. Clean enough for me. Right, uh, let's bring him for a close up. I will zoom in. Look at that, eh? Technology. If it only focus. Come on. There we go. Right, so you can see what we've done. I've just uh, taken it back. Those marks in there are just sanding marks. We haven't actually taken. Uh, I suppose technically we have, but we've taken next to no material away. All we've done there is remove the paint and clean the surface. Um, I could have taken some paint off underneath. Actually, I might do. Uh, yeah, probably should, shouldn't I? Let's do that first. You can have a close-up of some grinding now. There we go. That looks better. 
Again, the only reason for cleaning it off underneath is just so that the welding process doesn't burn the paint and scorch it. If it does, honestly, it takes you ages to get it off. It marks the metal. Just do it. It's not a big deal. So the next thing we've got to do is uh, clamp the chain where we're going to need it. And I'm going to tack weld it on, remove the clamp, and then, uh, then we'll seam it. Okay, so we've got the welder out now, as you can see. I'm going to give a quick basic setup guide on the welder. Um, unfortunately, I can't tell you exactly what kind of settings you're going to need to use. That tends to vary a little bit welder to welder. But I can give you a few pointers. Um, first thing we're going to need to do, let's do a few, a few uh, little, little things. Um, this is the earth clamp. As we said earlier on, the, uh, this is earth, the wire inside the nozzle, there, that's actually energised positive. If I touch these two together, it will spark. So what we're trying to do, uh, we're going to put that wire between the two pieces of metal we're going to need to join and weave between the two. If the wire is going to melt, it's going to cause the original metal here to melt and on the, uh, on the chain. It's also going to blend itself into there too. So, one thing I did while the camera was off, I forgot to do it. On the top here, I've actually just ground a little shiny piece on top. That's because, for the same reason the, uh, the wire won't uh, hook up. We need this to be nice and clean on the earth, otherwise this is gonna, you're going to get no current going through. So that's that on, that's easy. Uh, the, type of, oops, the type of welding we're going to be doing is called MIG welding. That's metal inert gas. So that just means the gas that we're using. In our case, it's a excuse me. In our case, it's a argon CO2 blend, or argon shield, or mic gas, or whatever you want to call it. It's just argon and uh, carbon di dioxide mix. You could just use straight carbon dioxide, but it's a little bit nicer when you use uh, use the blend, or even straight argon would be the best. Um, the gas is there just to shield the weld. There's all kinds of contaminants in the air. Yeah, oxygen is the main one. It's going to get hydrogen's another. Thing you don't want in the metal while it whilst it's melt, it's literally boiling in front of you. There's plenty of videos on YouTube you can watch to see that happening. But the idea is that this uh, this gas is going to flow through this pipe. It comes out around the nozzle, and it shields. It shields the uh, shields the weld as it's forming. It's got nothing to do with heat or anything like that. It's um, it's well, it's inert. It doesn't do anything. It just keeps the weld clean. So I'll bring you in now. Show you what the different uh, features of the welder are. This is actually quite a nice welder. It's a Lincoln. Um, I've never had any trouble with it. I like Lincoln. Some people like ESAP. Some people like Miller. Um, I bought this one because I got the best deal on it. To be honest, I've no real preference. Um, let's take a look at the front of it. Okay, I'm going to try and stay out of the way now so I can um, show you what's going on here. We've got two buttons, two knobs, whatever you want to call them. Uh, the top one here. See the two little rollers that that. Uh, Denotes the wire going through the middle. That's the wire speed. The speed the wire is going to come out of the welder. So right now you can see we're set on number seven, which will come out about that fast. If I were to turn this all the way around to one, let's say, if I just trim it back so you can see it, it only comes out incredibly slowly. Now, with experience, you'll um, you'll get the hang of where your wire speed needs to be. Uh, if I turn it all the way up to 10, it comes flying out. But this welder's good around there. Um, there's actually just here, there's a table you can uh, use. It's only a guideline, don't take it as gospel truth. Uh, so we've got wide diameter, 0.6 millimeters, that's what we're using. Um, what kind of gas you're using? Argon CO2, that's what we're using. Um, and then you've got wire speed versus how many amps you're using. So, you know, it's a guide, you can work it out. But as we're going at the minute, generally this thing welds really nicely on setting number four, which is one, two, three, 90 amps on somewhere around number seven wire speed. Um, again, it's, this is a guideline, it's good, you can use it. Um, just don't take it as the gospel truth because it's not always completely, uh, I mean, metals vary as well. Like I'm welding a really hard steel chain to mild steel. Um, obviously there's going to be some differential in there. Right, so the gas bottle, that's on the back of the machine. Uh, I'm sure you've all seen a gas bottle before. But if you listen to the, uh, the nozzle now, when I pull the trigger, all you can hear is the wire feed and the motor going. That's it. Cut it off. If I turn on the gas bottle, you 
you can hear the gas coming out. Now that's coming out at the end of this nozzle here, right around the wire. If I take off the thing, we can actually see some holes in there. They actually spin around. Look, that's the, the tip. You can change those. They, uh, they wear out, get splatter all over them. Get rid of that. So that's where the gas is going to come out. It then gets directed by this collar going over the top and it comes out all the way around it. If when you're welding, this is another reason you need to clean your metal. Uh, all splatter gets up in there. There's a little bit in there now, but it's nothing serious. It actually blocks the gas off, and then you start getting porous welds, which is, well, nobody likes a porous weld. So, with that said, the machine's set up good enough for now, I think. Um, what I'm going to do is put my mask on, I'll give you a quick look at that, and uh, we'll weld this chain on. Okay, now we know when welding we're going to need to be using a welding mask. Um, there are different kinds of masks. Uh, actually, quite often when you buy a welder, they'll give you one for free. It's just a cheap little thing. You can either hold it in front of your face with your left hand, or it'll look something like this, a proper welding helmet, except it won't be... This is what we call a reactor light mask. It's automatic. Uh, I don't know if the camera will show it, but if I put this on, I can actually see straight through it. It's just got a green tinge to it. Uh, as soon as I start welding, it'll darken which is really good because it means when you start the weld you can see where you're going uh, then it dims obviously the brightness from the welding makes it you, you can still see but it, it's just automatic so it, uh, it makes your life a lot easier if you're learning to weld I strongly recommend you get one this one was about 50 pounds it's they're not expensive get this is an ESAB one um, you can get them on eBay you can get them from your welding supplier don't buy one of the cheap 20 pound Chinese things um, I have had Alkali a couple of times, that's what you get when you're looking straight at the UV, it actually burns the, the front of your eyes. It is real and it does hurt. It's like you're throwing a handful of sand in your eyes, you don't need it. It's 50 quid, just buy one. Um, it'll be a good investment, it lasts for years, so it's not something you have to replace every two minutes. Uh, so, well this one's mine, so let's, uh, let's get down to the bottom here, I'll bring the camera in a bit closer. We'll, uh, we'll do some welding. I've got literally no idea what this camera's going to react like when I start welding, so uh, I guess we'll both find out. Okay, so we're about to start. A couple of tips. Don't tie knots in this, in the, in the cord. There's, uh, there's a near three liner down here which you can change, and what tends to happen if you imagine the, uh, the wires actually stored in the machine, I can show you that probably a bit later. Um, if you start bending it and twisting it, it, it makes the machine's uh, life pretty difficult to get it through and it makes the wire speed less constant. So push the machine back as far away as you can get it and get this, uh, this pipe just as, you know, as straight as you can. So I'm going to do that just now. Push that back. There we go, let's put it nice and uh, well, as far away as I'm going to get it. A little bit of a curve doesn't matter. When you start welding, if I bring this up to the camera, I don't know why you'll see it. I've got ooh, half an inch, something like that. That's how much you want sticking out at the end. While well, you're welding, that's about the distance of where you're going to want to stay. So the first thing I'm going to do now is put a tack weld on the chain to hold the chain onto the, uh, onto the trailer. And also it means I can remove the clamp. So I'm, I'm not contending with the clamp when I'm trying to weld. So let's see what, uh, let's see what happens. section so I don't obstruct the camera too much. Now 
Okay, what I'll do now is I'll bring the camera in so we can see it a little bit better. That welded, welded fine. Um, the one thing I should have done, and I didn't do, we were talking about removing all the surface contaminants, like the paint and rust and all that kind of thing. Another thing that you're supposed to remove, and I didn't, is all the, um, was any kind of coating really. This chain was actually galvanised. I should have removed it, but uh, never mind. I'll get a close-up of it. I'll tell you what I'll do. Okay. There's the finished result. The uh, That's not going to go anywhere. You can see the little bit of uh, the browning around here. I'm going to touch it very gingerly because it's probably still hot. Um, that's not the neatest one I've ever done. It certainly isn't the worst and it certainly won't go anywhere. So all we've got to do now is clean it up and uh, put a bit of paint on it. I'm going to put some red lead on there first, red oxide primer. And paint it the same colour as the uh, same colour as the trailer, I suppose. Let's uh, let's go up higher. Okay, and there's a good little after pick. That's what it's going to look like. Obviously, I've just locked it to the hitch. That's not where it'll usually go, but uh, I think that's certainly going to add a bit of security to this thing. It'll make me feel a bit uh, better about leaving it by itself overnight. Um, right, there you go. Any questions, just ask. Um, if you'd like to see any more welding videos or anything like that, let me know. Uh, anything else in particular you'd like to see, just put it in the comments below. Thanks for watching.